Okay, I am uh, part of the response to uh, climate change, that working for the Area Agencies on Aging, uh, we are like to think that the, uh, we're taking care of the people over 50. Uh, Maine has the highest proportion of people over 50 in the United States of America. And so we're looking at issues like climate change, and we say, wait a second, we've got to develop a response. What happens if there's an emergency, and how prepared are we for that? And so uh, myself and, and our agencies are part of an um, effort that's starting uh, with the federal agencies and the state agencies uh, to um, develop response mechanisms for different kinds of, of, we might say, health emergencies and how we might deal with the, uh, particularly the older uh, seniors, uh, many of whom are in their house and have some uh, challenges. And so, very briefly, uh, if we're looking at the, the older American population, it's quite different than, than the rest of us, we could say. I'm part of it. Uh, what are the things we need to think about in terms of uh, an emergency response? Uh, if we get older, we have uh, maybe some mental challenges, dementia, uh, part of our generation, uh, reluctance to ask for help. Uh, very often we find that, in this case, heat emergency, which we're working on, uh, there's a very little awareness of what a heat stroke signs and symptoms. And there's a kind of a social isolation mindset, if I may say that, that we find particularly in the rural areas. In addition to these communication challenges uh, for us, uh, there's mobility issues for the seniors. They have trouble moving around, many of them around their apartments or their homes, and in getting out. And, and finally, for a great many of the uh, main seniors, there's financial challenges. Uh, air conditioning in the summer uh, may not be uh, working for them, and it may not be available for them, and they may not be seeking help about it. So what happens if we have a heat emergency? Uh, how do we get these people? How do we contact them? How do we get message to them? How do we help them survive? Uh, there is a it's beginning... Uh, a statewide uh, group that includes Department of Health, Human Services, and the emergency management people uh, working together to create a plan to develop the messages. A heat emergency is uh, 105 degrees for three days. We haven't had one of those in Maine, but that's the definition they have. So what are the messages that would be needed for different? It's like trying to predict the weather. There's a watch. There's a warning. And so then uh, that... Uh, for any kind of response, the, the paid staff, the professionals, are a tiny part of the issue. Uh, this whole thing depends on volunteers. It depends on community uh, support, community involvement to make any of this work. That is the key message I want to say, although I'm involved in a professional way. Uh, we uh, have in, in Cumberland County and other counties, uh, we're forming up a local task force of the various uh, uh, agencies that have interest, including those like ours that have direct contact with elder seniors. I direct the Meals on Wheels program. We know a lot about those people. Um, and there's home care. There's other groups that have direct contact with the people in their homes. Uh, we're figuring out how we could, what would happen, how we'd gear up to contact them. Uh, in addition, of course, uh, we, we very well know that contacting uh, these people is basically up to the municipalities, and the municipality uh, has a big challenge in reaching those people, and that's where the community mobilization becomes absolutely critical. Thank you.